This is a surgical video of a radical resection of a right proximal femur, Ewing sarcoma, with reconstruction utilizing a modular segmental tumor prosthesis. The authors of this video certify that they have no commercial associations that might pose a conflict of interest in connection with this presentation. All medications and devices were FDA approved. This is a 19-year-old female who presented with a lesion of the right femur, right side low back pain, and lateral thigh pain for four months. Physical exam demonstrated a swollen right thigh, but no grossly palpable mass. X-ray imaging of the right femur demonstrated a lucent permeative lesion in the right proximal femoral shaft that appears malignant with some cortical destruction and no ossification. Under ultrasound guidance, we performed a core needle biopsy down to the lesion mass and obtained seven cores of tissues from different directions of the neoplasm through a single stab hole in the skin. Pathology confirmed a diagnosis of Ewing sarcoma of the right proximal femur. MRI imaging showed an aggressive, cortically destructive marrow replacing lesion measuring approximately 20 centimeters craniocaudally in the right proximal femoral shaft with possible extension of the mass into the femoral neck. MRI also revealed a soft tissue component almost fully encompassing the femur and anterior cortex. CT imaging revealed an aggressive destructive lesion of the proximal intertrochanteric and subtrochanteric right femur with associated soft tissue mass periosteal reaction, lytic destructive changes, mild surrounding edema, and a few mildly prominent right inguinal lymph nodes. The soft tissue mass involved the anterior compartment musculature, adductor musculature, and involvement of the lesser trochanter at the iliopsoas attachment. A mass effect on deep femoral artery and vein were also noted. After being treated cautiously with an abductor brace, the patient presented one month later with displaced pathologic fracture involving the subtrochanteric proximal femur secondary to an aggressive destructive lesion. Pathological fractures in patients with primary bone sarcomas should not be considered an absolute indication for amputation. According to Benetto's et al., the priority in the management of a pathological fracture in patients with primary bone sarcomas is the stabilization of the fracture. Casting, traction, bracing, or even operative stabilization using internal or external fixation of the fracture are methods employed to stabilize the fracture, while further therapy is undertaken. Here at Marstown Medical Center, we provided a similar approach. After bracing, the patient continued chemotherapy for four months before limb salvage surgery undergoing a radical resection. The treatment management of our patient aligns with the findings of Benetto's et al.'s paper, Pathological Fractures in Primary Bone Sarcomas. Usually originating in the diaphysis of long bones, Ewing sarcoma is a rare form of cancer affecting fewer than 1,000 people a year, primarily children and young adults between the ages of 10 and 25. The patient was brought into the operating room and general anesthesia was administered. The right femur was signed for safety measures and proper timeout was performed. The patient was placed in a semilateral position. We incised through the iliotibial band and tensor fascia lata fascia to get down to the gluteus medius and vastus lateralis. There is a pathologic fracture that came from the Ewing sarcoma and the apex and anterior portion of the fracture is extended here. Here is the gluteus maximus tendon, and this is the gluteus medius insertion onto the greater trochanter. Now we will dissect the sciatic nerve and release the gluteus maximus tendon from insertion on the femur, protecting the sciatic nerve, and then dissect to the joint capsule and see the piriformis and short external rotators, tagging them separately and incising them cleanly from the capsule. Here we expose our hip. Here is the piriformis. Here is our external rotators in quadratus femoris, which is important to save for later capsular reconstruction. This is the gluteus medius. There's no tumor extending above here intramedullary, so we will be able to save a piece of the greater trochanter with gluteus medius and gluteus minimus tendons and later repair it. This is the vastus lateralis, which we should save some of and some may need to be removed. 
Here are the hip adductor muscles. Deep to these, we will find the profunda vessels and ligate them. Here is the lesser trochanter. We will save the iliopsoas muscle for later repair. Here we have made a T-shaped capsulotomy with the capsule leaflets tagged with suture. We then dislocated the hip and created a digastric osteotomy in the greater trochanter in order to save the insertion of the gluteus medius and minimus in the origin of the vastus lateralis for later repair onto the prosthesis. Using the MRI images to calculate the distance from the greater trochanter to the soft tissue component, we measured 20 centimeters from the tip of the greater trochanter and transected the femoral shaft using a sagittal saw. We then removed the specimen, accomplishing radical resection. This is our iliopsoas muscle. We have released that. We have opened up the joint capsule here anteriorly. We will transfer that over to the piriformis muscle here, where they will meet and overlap to help reinforce the joint capsule proximally and posteriorly. This is the hip joint capsule with two heavy non-absorbable sutures through it where prosthesis will be relocated and tied around the neck in a purse string manner. Then we will transfer the iliopsoas to piriformis, have our external rotators come up and help reinforce the other repairs, close the capsule area, reconstruct it, and prevent dislocation posteriorly. This is the quadratus femoris, the other external rotators, and the gemelli. As a result, we won't be able to manually dislocate the hip. We collected a bone marrow specimen, sent it to pathology, and the margins came back negative. We then reamed the femur in one millimeter increments until a trial prosthesis fit perfectly, allowing relocation and stability to the joint. The trial prosthesis was then removed from the medullary cavity, and then the final prosthesis was cemented into place. The new prosthesis was then relocated into the hip socket. The piriformis will come this way and the iliopsoas muscle this way to reinforce the capsule and external rotators over the posterior capsule. We will put the hip in abduction so that we can then repair the greater trochanter and also put sutures through the actual hip abductors. We have here our psoas muscle attached to the piriformis and the psoas is covering the joint capsule anteriorly. Now we will bring our external rotators around so they cover the posterior joint capsule and that will protect and prevent the prosthesis from dislocating. Now, as demonstrated in the video, you cannot pull the prosthesis out of the hip socket because of the noose from the purse string method. We rotated the muscles around the sciatic nerve and checked that it can sublex because we want to make sure that it is loose without any tension on it. Here is the piriformis, here are the external rotators, and here is the hip. And when we pull on the hip, we can move the entire pelvis. As a result, the piece will not dislocate. We are reconstructing the hip abductor muscles, and what we have done is preserve the greater trochanter, and we have weaved sutures through the greater trochanter and through the abductor muscles and tied it down tightly. Now, we are going to put the greater trochanteric claw here and fasten it down. These are the external rotators and sciatic nerve without a lot of tension on it. Here we have fastened our greater trochanter down with the greater trochanteric claw with dowel miles cable and that will hold it in place. Then we will rotate the gluteus maximus and tensor fascia lata over each other in this location for complete coverage. But first, we will bring up our adductor muscles to hold the edge and suture our vastus lateralis in place. Further closure was done in a layered fashion with number one vicryl for deep tissue, 2O monocryl for subcutaneous tissue, and a running 3O monocryl subcuticular stitch. Postoperatively, the patient will continue monitoring with routine imaging and wearing a low profile hip abduction brace. She was cleared to resume chemo for Ewing sarcoma two weeks after undergoing the procedure.